In this video, we will look at a variety of problems involving similarity, congruence, and proofs. In the first problem, we are given pairs of triangles. You can see that one is bigger than the other. Uh, one of them is a dilation. The others are not. So we need to know which one shows a dilation. Well, if it's going to be a dilation, then the, uh, the two triangles should be similar. So for example, if I have the small triangle and then I have the big triangle. Let's say that this was 2 and this was 3. Um, maybe the scale factor is 3, which would mean that everything gets multiplied by 3. So the bigger triangle then would be 6 and 9. This would be a dilation. All right, let's look at some of the lengths in the small triangle and the big triangle in the first image. So the small triangle, the vertical side is one and the horizontal side is two. So I've uh, indicated that here. The bigger triangle, the vertical side is four and the horizontal side is, let's see, three, four, five. Okay, now let's think about what the scale factor is. Um, if I look at the 1 becoming a 4, then that would be a scale factor of 4. Um, so that means the 2, if the scale factor is 4, the 2 should become an 8. But I see it's a 5. So this is not a dilation. Let's look at the next one. Okay, we've got the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. Let's just do the same thing again. So the smaller triangle has uh, lengths two and three. And then the bigger triangle has lengths, let's see, that's four and three, four, and five. Okay, um, the scale factor, if the two is becoming a four, that's a scale factor of 2, or multiplying by 2. If I were to do the same scale factor for the horizontal piece, in other words, multiply by 2, then what I should get is a 6. But what I see instead is a 5. So this is not a dilation. Okay, let's do it again. Small triangle, big triangle. So the small triangle here is 1 and 3, and the big triangle is 3 and, let's see, 2, 4, 6. Okay, so if I look at these lengths, the scale factor would have to be 3. 1 times 3 is 3. So if I use the same scale factor for the horizontal piece, all right, again, multiplying by three, I should get nine. But what I see instead is six. So this is not a dilation either. All right, hopefully this one is a dilation because it's the last one that's left. So I've got the smaller triangle and I've got the bigger triangle. So the smaller triangle has lengths two and four. The bigger triangle has lengths three and six. Okay, um, this time it won't be so easy to say, um, well, what happens? What, how does two become a three? And then what happens to the four? So instead of doing it that way, I think I'll try looking at fractions. Um, if I do vertical over horizontal, that's 2 over 4. Okay, if I look at the other triangle, if I do vertical over horizontal, that's 3 over 6. Well, 2 over 4 is 1 half. 3 over 6 is also 1 half. Those are equal. So that means these are similar triangles and uh, it is a dilation. So we could have done it the same way on these other problems instead of 
looking at how does the one become a three and doing the scale factor that way. What I could have done instead, and maybe it would have been simpler, I could have looked at the small triangle and said, well, this is a ratio of one to three. And then the big triangle is a ratio of three to six. Um, three to six is one half. One third does not equal one half. So that is not a dilation. All right, I could have done them all that way as well. So this last one is the answer. All right, line segment ST is dilated to form line segment S prime T prime using this dilation. This notation means that Q is the center of dilation and 2.25 is the scale factor. All right, that means that, um, for example, the length of segment ST times 2.25 will give me the length of S prime T prime, for example. And also, it's the same thing with these distances. Okay, the ratio of um, 1.2, if I do 1.2 times 2.25, that should equal the new distance. Okay, um, but let's see. I'm betting they're going to ask us to find x. Oh, look at that. What is x? Well, um, we have a pair of similar triangles here. If you look at uh, this triangle, the small triangle right here, okay, and then if you look at the larger triangle that's here, okay, those are similar triangles. So when we, ha we have a situation like this, part over part should equal part over part. So I could do, for example, x over 2. And then I just need to do the same pattern on the other side. And that should equal 1.5 over 1.2. All right, this should be a valid equation. So I can just go ahead and solve this. OK, so I'm going to put this in my calculator and see what I get. So that turns out to be 1.25. And then to get x by itself, we're just going to multiply both sides by 2. So that's going to be 2.5. So that should be the answer. So this should be the answer right here. OK, in this problem, we've got quadra quadrilateral FGHJ being dilated according to this rule. And uh, they're just plain telling us that we're going to take the point XY and it will become 2 thirds X comma 2 thirds Y. So ultimately they're, they're asking us, hey there's a little picture of the quadrilateral, but they're asking us what are the coordinates of point J prime? So all we have to do is look at point J and then use the rule. Multiply everything by 2 thirds. So point J is the point negative 3 comma negative 6. So that's negative 3 comma negative 6. So the point J prime should be the point, um, I'll just leave a little space here. Okay. So we're supposed to multiply everything by two thirds. So we will do two thirds times negative three and two thirds times negative six. And that should be the answer. All right, so point J prime should be, well, this will be negative something. A positive times a negative is a negative. Um, think of this as being negative 3 over 1, and this is like having negative 6 over 1. So um, 
2 times 3 is 6. And 3 times 1 is 3. Alright, this will also be negative. 2 times 6 is 12. And 3 times 1 is 3. So then it's just a matter of reducing. So this will be negative 2. And this will be negative 4. So this should be the answer, negative 2 comma negative 4. So this should be the answer right here. Alright, so for this problem they're simply asking us for the scale factor. So you just need to know what the scale factor means really. Write this down in your notes right now. I'm going to use um, SF to represent the scale factor. The scale factor is always going to be the new length or the new distance divided by the original distance. So that's what we're being asked to find. So what's the new distance and what was the original distance. So first of all, which one of these images is the original? So see how this smaller triangle has the little primes on it? D prime, E prime, F prime. That means this is the image. This is the new triangle. This one that's just D, E, F without the primes, this is the original. Okay, so consider the distance from the center what is the distance, what is the the new distance, okay, look at the small triangle. Now, I could use the distance of point D or point E or point F, but only one of those did they actually give me a number for. So that's why I'm going to use point F for this problem. So this is the new distance, and that's three. Now, what about the original distance? Okay, well the original distance is the distance from the center to point F, the original point. So the original point F, the distance is represented by this arrow that I just drew. How long is that? Well, I see the 3 and the 7, so that's 10. That is a length of 10. A lot of students mess up and think that the new distance is, is 7. No, that's just the distance between the original point and the new point. All right, the original distance is the distance from the center all the way to the original point. All right, so I had to add these up. All right, so 3 over 10 should be the answer. All right, there you go. All right, in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. That means they cut each other in half. So these pieces are going to be equal, and these pieces are going to be equal. So SW is 4. Okay, if SW is 4, that automatically means that WU is also going to be 4. All right? Because this diagonal is being cut in half. Um, let's see, WT is 6. Well, if this is 6, then that means this is 6 for the same reason as before. The diagonals bisect each other. They cut each other in half. Um, let's see, what else? RS is 5. So this is 5, which means that this is 5 because the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. What else? ST is 7. So if this is 7, that means this is 7. Opposite sides of a parallel parallelogram are congruent. So with all these numbers labeled, we should be able to answer anything they throw at us. What is the length of WU? Um, let's see. Well, WU is 4. We already mentioned that, so the answer should be 4. Alright, for this next problem, 
there is a set of formulas that you need to add to your notes right now. So if I were you, I would pause the video and I would write this down, copy down this picture and write these formulas down on a sheet of paper. All right, see if you can understand what these three little formulas mean. All right, we have a big, the big triangle itself is a right triangle. Uh, let's see, can I get yellow? I don't have yellow on here. That's okay. The big triangle is a right triangle. So I have uh, the, the leg one and I have leg two and then I have the hypotenuse of the big triangle. The hypotenuse is split up into two pieces, piece one and piece two. And then I have the altitude, all right, that forms a right angle. That makes two smaller right triangles. But look, I have L1, you know, leg one and part one. See how they're together on the same side? And I have leg two and I have part two. And then the altitude. So one formula says the altitude squared is equal to part times part. That's the first formula. The next formula says leg one squared equals part times whole. All right, leg one squared equals part, part one times whole. Leg one goes with part one. Leg one squared equals part one times the whole thing. And then the next formula is the same thing for the other side. Leg two squared equals part two times whole. Leg two goes with part two. Leg two squared equals part two times the whole thing. Okay, now let's look back at this and see which one of these formulas I might use. Okay, now we're supposed to find x. Um, notice that x is one of the legs. Let me change colors. Okay, this is one of the legs. So this might be like leg one, for example. And this could be part one. Okay, and then this would be the whole hypotenuse. All right, because we're looking for this leg, this x, then we will use this formula that says leg one squared is equal to part one times the hypotenuse. All right, so leg one squared is equal to part one times the hypotenuse. Okay, so leg one in this problem is x. So this becomes x squared is equal to part one is 16 times the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is the whole thing. That's 16 plus nine, that is 25. Okay, so I just need to solve this. So x squared is equal to 400, taking the square root of both sides, that gives me x is equal to 20, which means this should be the answer. Okay, in this diagram, VZ over YZ is equal to WZ over XZ. To prove that triangle VWZ is similar to triangle YXZ by the side angle side similarity theorem, which other sides or angles should be used? Okay, um, so when we talk about side angle side. Um, when we're talking about congruence we need a pair of congruent sides, a pair of congruent angles, and then another pair of congruent sides. And it has to form sort of a sandwich. So um, the angle has to be in between the two sides like this. Like if this was a side and this was a side, the angle has to be in the middle. So it's going to be the same thing for similarity except for the sides do not have to be congruent they have to be proportional, um, meaning they have to form the same ratio, the same fraction. And that's what this is saying. So this is just telling us which sides are corresponding sides. Um, so VZ and YZ must be corresponding sides. So VZ 
okay, and yz are corresponding sides. Okay, um, and wz and xz are corresponding sides. So wz and xz are corresponding sides. So I can't mark them congruent, you know, like I would, you know, with a mark and a mark. So that's why I'm just using colors. So we have these sides and these sides. Um, so we have a, a pair of sides and another pair of sides. All that's missing is the angle in the middle. All that's missing is this. So the angle in the middle is this. Okay, this is what's missing. So we can forget about the sides. We have the sides that we need. The sides are given right here. Side, side, whoops. Side, side. Um, it's just a matter of which one of these statements matches what I just marked in this picture. So let's see, VZW, VZW, that's one of them. YZX, YZX, that's the other one. So this is the answer right here. Let's look at the other one. VWZ, VWZ, that's way up there, that's weird. That's not in between the two sides. So it's definitely not that one. So it's, it's definitely this one. 